On paper, I should adore The Deer Hunter. It's a star-studded Vietnam War film. It was shot by the same cinematographer who did Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and it was edited by the same editor who did the first two Godfather films. Everything about this film screams greatness, but it almost seems like the film is doing its best to make me not like it, and make itself harder to watch and enjoy for no good reason. Which is a tragedy, because if the film was structured correctly, it could have been an all-time incredible classic on the level of The Godfather. The film was directed by Michael Kimino, and it stars Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, John Savage, John Cazell, and Meryl Streep. It tells the story of three friends who leave their quiet and comfortable mountain home for the harsh and unwelcoming jungles of Vietnam. We witness the horrors they experience, and we see how these horrors affected them as they return to a home that they can never fully return to. I know a lot of people love The Deer Hunter, and I can see why. It was the first of the big four Vietnam War films, which are The Deer Hunter, Apocalypse Now, Platoon, and Full Metal Jacket. It's also by far the least flashy of the four, with the least amount of action and the least amount of fluff. It's simply the brutal reality of war and its devastating effects, without any attempt to sugarcoat anything. Unfortunately, it makes the viewing experience simply not that enjoyable. Now, I know that may have been the point, and if so, then mission accomplished, I guess. But if you ask me, I think that films that deal with difficult subject matters need to find the right balance between portraying said difficulty in an honest light, whilst also crafting an experience that is worthwhile to the viewer, and I don't think The Deer Hunter was able to strike such a balance. For example, the directing style is high on realism, but that makes the scenes and dialogue less structured and harder to follow. I don't think the positives gained are worth what is lost with this decision. But it's not just the way the scenes are directed. By far the biggest problem with this film is its pacing, and this issue is especially felt in the first act. The first act is slow, cumbersome, and takes forever. It takes the film an hour and ten minutes just to get to Vietnam. I understand what they were going for, but it really, really shouldn't have been that long. It could have easily been trimmed, even by 20 minutes, which is a lot. The film establishes what it needs to establish, like the camaraderie between the characters, the love triangle between De Niro, Walken, and Streep, the excitement slash anxiety before the war, etc. It does all of this effectively, and you feel what the film wants you to feel, but come on now, do we really need all of the filler? No, it doesn't need to take this long. It's pointless. Ultimately, of course, despite the major issues, the film is still good overall. There are a few moments in the first act that I do like, like the green beret scene and the drop of wine that spills from the cup. Just a few subtle pieces of foreshadowing in preparation for what's to come. And then we get to Vietnam and holy fuck. The Russian roulette scene is the most intense, horrific, and terrible thing I've ever seen in my life. The terror, the agony, the pain, the inhumanity, it's all on display here. And the third act is much more emotionally direct than the first, and showcases some really gut-wrenching scenes. So as you can see, the film does improve over time. It's just that first act that just bums me out every time I rewatch it, and it really shouldn't have been that bad. As for the cast, it's nigh on impossible for a film not to be good with a cast like that. Robert De Niro is excellent as always. Christopher Walken is amazing. He nails his tragic descent into madness caused by the atrocities he experienced. Meryl Streep has a relatively small role in the film, but she did such a great job that she was able to receive her first of many, 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 many Oscar nominations. And then there's John Cazell in his final film role. He had terminal cancer while filming. They shot his scenes first in order to complete them in time. He was in a relationship with Meryl Streep during the shoot, and he died before the film was completed. A legendary career cut way too short. 
So at the end of the day, I still think The Deer Hunter is worth your time, and you should watch it at least once, even if only to say that you did. Despite some major, major flaws, The Deer Hunter still hits hard. I just can't help but wonder what could have been if slightly different decisions were made. The Deer Hunter misses out on the top 20 for me. It is one of my least favorite Best Picture winners of the 70s, but since the 70s is the best decade in Oscar history and all the winners are good, that's not saying too much. Up next is the 52nd Best Picture winner and the final Best Picture winner of the glorious 70s, the classic divorce drama Kramer vs. Kramer. Check back again for the next video of DB Reviews Oscar Madness Marathon and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a thing. Thank you all very much and let the journey continue.